My name is Linda Tedeschi. I've been doing art my entire life. I was uh, raised in Saugus, but half my life I was raised in Malden at my grandmother's and my aunt's, so I'm very familiar with the city of Malden. So it was a great opportunity to be able to show uh, my work in Malden Center, so I hope you enjoy it. So the exhibition, I've called it Comprehensive Insanity, and I'm just trying to show the two sides of the work I dominantly do, very, uh, uh, very high um, uh, renderings, uh, paintings, you know, figurative paintings versus, you know, just color compositions and abstract. So that's where I get the idea of being very organized and tight versus very loose and not rigid. So these pieces are where the abstract came in. I, um, I was pretty much a figurative realist for most of my life and because I do printmaking and you have to very much prepare what you're going to do, how many colors, what colors you're going to use, do they go together, you know, to make the whole thing work. Do you need four colors to put this together? Do you need three? How, many, how much work? How much? So what I started to do was put colors together beforehand and a lot of my friends uh, liked this as just a study and they turned into their own thing. The idea is to get a feeling without having a subject. I would say that I'm newer in abstract art. Um, it's just color for me and it doesn't matter about anything else and you know perhaps later I'll go deeper. I'm doing other things now that's more abstract. These works I did um, around 1999, I, I went on vacation with some good friends of mine and took a lot of photos when it was still film cameras. And those pictures came out very interesting and I started to use those for work. This is an image I use a real lot. This is called Gossip and it was just the greatest picture, a candid shot of the girls laughing. And I, I started this with, an, with sketches and an etching. I just really like how the girls work together, like how the laugh, like I got it right when they started to laugh, this particular photo, so you'll see this image again and again. I'm probably not even done with it, but I call it gossip because everybody uh, criticizes a gossip, but everybody gossips, so it was just very funny to me. I always could draw, I just could do it. Um, so when, when I was a little, my whole family went to Italy. My parents are from Italy, both of them, they met in America. Um, so when I was like, I don't know, 10 or 11, the whole family for the entire summer went to Italy and uh, I was greatly influenced. I really didn't think I was going to enjoy this um, and my parents were going to speak Italian the whole time but I was really pretty amazed by all the work, the Renaissance and all the figurative and the colors and the, it was very impressive. So I think after that, so I would have been 11 maybe, um, I started to uh, do a lot more figurative, just be more serious about it. Um, I don't think I went into color until high school, college. Um, you just try to get it down, you can make it real, and then you can introduce another element like color or paint. Um, I was never formally trained as a painter, ever. Um, I don't call myself a painter now either. Um, I'm a printmaker. I did go into painting because it seems like every artist is supposed to paint. Um, it wasn't my favorite at first, I have to say. There's just, just you know, issues that are maybe trivial, but, um, you know, I preferred precisions versus a softer brush. So this is a, a commission that I did for one of my close friends, uh, Melanie Loomis. This was sort of a, just a gift to her. And two of the things she likes, you know, what do you draw somebody, you know? So you just try to think of who they are and what they like. And two of the things that she really likes was Madonna and mermaids. So at the time, Madonna was on the cover of Rolling Stone, and this is when she went all Kabbalah. And so I took that piece, and then I did a fish on the bottom, and then just with pastel, just put all kinds of crazy color. This one, again, I'd like to do more of this body of work. This is called Broken Self-Image. This is the first one of this. Just really gets to me how your, you know, your number one thing to be is beautiful. You know, you get a free pass to everything, you know, if the world considers you pretty. And I think it's just so, I think it's silly and I think that it's getting worse. You know, everybody has their sense of, you know, they want to be attractive, they want to be accepted in whatever way that they think acceptance is, but I think that the hard definition of your outer core is really not, not the goal you want. You just want to be the person you want to be and all that other stuff will shine through and that's what I started to say with um, broken self-image. So this is the second one, more uh, quick 
uh, of broken self-image. Um, just something I thought of, of just a lot of my girlfriends, uh, people I know where they would just, you know, comment on everything wrong with them. It's all they would see in the mirror. So I tried to do a quick, this is just ink on paper, um, of, you know, a woman who's just critical in the mirror. This is what she sees is in the mirror, a fat, ugly bitch. And then all around it is what she actually is. And I focus on women here, but once again, it's going into um, men and women, everybody, who's just so concerned about um, how you look or how people see you. I think you should like yourself first and then not worry about what everyone else thinks. So that's kind of where that is, just sort of a statement on that. This is um, a two color reduction, a woodcut reduction, which means the same piece of wood uh, cut down each color. Um, so your addition can only be so many because the wood is destroyed by the time uh, you finish with all the color passes. And I call this alcohol and testosterone marinade. It's kind of on the broken self-image idea where, you know, maybe men aren't so concerned about the beauty, but they're concerned about being, you know, looking tough in the picture, you know. An idea of graphic design, too, that I had a minor in, uh, UMass Amherst, to introduce text and imagery. I do that in prints because when, you, when you're cutting the wood, you have to do the text backwards. So I can write backwards pretty easily now because I've been doing it for so long. Thank you, Malden Access Television, for allowing me to exhibition my work, and thanks to the city of Malden for raising me. Um, if you come down, I hope you enjoy it, and thanks again.